QuickBooks Online 2022 Account and Settings, Billing and Subscription, Usage and Sales tab. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with a free 30 day trial. We're gonna hold down control, scroll up just a bit to get to that one, two, five percent. We're looking at the preferences, which are in the cog area, typically noting that as you go through the navigation process, the day to day transactions that we're gonna be entering will typically be going to by hitting the plus button, breaking it out by cycle or by customers, vendors, employees, and other for the normal business transactions down below and or for those no more normal transactions you might then go into the centers on the left hand side when you're going into those fundamental things that are kind of like the backdrop or the things that you need to set up in order to enter the day-to-day -day transactions those are typically in the settings and up in the cog area also remember that we have this different look and feel between the business layout which is more informal on the left hand side and if i hit the cog drop down we currently have the accounting view down below so it looks like Intuit is kind of testing out these two different views with basically an A-B test for a website. Here's what the accounting view looks like. We'll try to toggle back and forth between them as we go through and possibly jump on over to the sample file, which is currently in the accounting view to, to take a look at those two views. But I'm going to go back into the business view for now, back to the business view and keep it there for a bit. And then we're going to go up top and we're going to go into the settings. So the cog is the same right now, whether you're in the accounting or business view. It's the cog. The good old cog is that's sturdy and steady. We're in the, the your accounting area. We're looking for the account and settings. Account and settings. Last time we looked at the company area and this time we're going to go through the billing, the usage and the sales. Let's start with the billing and subscription. So we've got basically this will give you your current billing types of information. We're of course in the trial version. We only got 13 days to get through this thing. So here we go. And then you can upgrade, downgrade or cancel. Noting that if you think about the upgrade and downgrade and canceling options, you have to have some idea of of course when you would upgrade and so on and so forth. And uh, note that if you're talking about the software, there's a, there's one category that you want to think about, which is the desktop version versus the online version, which you think about as, in essence, two different softwares. It's, it's difficult to go from one to the other or much more difficult to go from one to the other to the variance within the software. If you're in the online version and then you want to upgrade, then you can think of it as basically the same software, but you're just adding features or subtracting features. So you can go, of course, to the Intuit website or the QuickBooks website and see basically the differences between the simple start, the essentials, the plus, the advanced. We're working here in the plus area, which is the recommended area with the free 30 day trial version. Going back on over. So then, of course, you can upgrade the plan. You can downgrade the plan. Noting, however, though, if you're in the upgraded plan, it's going to be more difficult to downgrade if you're using some of the features that are in the upgraded plan. So if you're not using the features in the upgrade that you don't need them, you want to pick the, the plan that's best suited for you, suiting the needs that you have without over picking the plan and then level up as you need, I think would be the recommended way to go instead of going to a plan that's too high, thinking that you're going to downgrade because you might then be utilizing things that uh, are in the advanced feature that are going to make it difficult to go back down. So then you can, of course, cancel here. Payroll is going to be that add on type of feature. So if you don't have payroll, you could add on the payroll. And then, of course, there's different levers, levels of the payroll as well with regards to the payroll support. Then they have other things that they can sell you. QuickBooks uh, Live Full Service Bookkeeping. So they can they got that if you want to look into that further. QuickBooks Online Payments. Accept payments online or in person. Payment options typically costing more for different payment options that may or may be useful in your particular business. Checks and supplies. So, again, other kinds of things that you can look into and shop for. Now you got the 1099s and the W-2 forms. Okay, let's go then to the usage tab, usage tab. So now we've got the billable users. So these are the things that are gonna be uh, some of the differentiating factors that Intuit is looking at when they're thinking about leveling up the software. So these are the things that are gonna be restricted at a certain price level that you can then level up and they're the typical things that you would need to advance to the next level in order to get. So for example, the number of users. So if you have multiple people that are using the software, we'll take a look at users later, but if I click on this, it will take you then to the user's information here, 
which you can also get to by going to the cog drop down up top and then go to the users and you get basically five of them we're in the pro uh, setting and you got the accounting firm that you can add as well too which you typically have one there that you can add as well so we'll look more into that in a future presentation let's go back into the cog for now and go back into the accounting and account and settings tab and then we're going to go back down to the usage information switch sections without saving i don't want to say did i do i didn't change anything okay i'm going to say okay and then we've got the chart of accounts so this is the number you got 250 on the chart of accounts you can hit the little question mark for more information on the right here and so if you go over and are using more than more than that uh, then that would be another way, reason why you might need to level up in terms of the number of accounts that are in use the tags this is kind of a specialty feature that we might go into after the practice problem the use of tags it's a really neat feature but it's kind of an added on type of feature and it's limited to 40 at this point so if you wanted to level up to get more tags you could do that too and so they've got some more information to level up down here as well let's go to the sales tab on the left hand side sales tab you can customize customize the way the forms look to your customers so the forms the standard forms that are going to the customers are typically going to be the sales type of forms we may take a look more at this in the future and i think we have another section after the practice problem that looks at it a little bit more but for the practice problem we're typically going to be using the default invoices that will be in place meaning you got the invoice you got the estimate you got the sales receipt the invoice and the estimate are the two forms that you would expect often to be given to a customer on the sales side of things and for that you would want to customize it both in terms of the cosmetic look of it meaning you want might want your logo on it your color scheme on it or whatever and then uh, and then uh, have your contact information and so on and then you also might have some some items that you want to change on the invoice in terms of added fields so that you can track different things and so that that would be more of a functionality type of difference and uh, so but for most part we're going to be using the standard invoices and estimates that are in place and those are great for the data input so from a data input standpoint from the standard data input those will work fine and that's what we'll be using in the practice problem and then we might talk about some of these other items which some of these are kind of combined together you could add more fields to the invoice that you might want to track things and search for them in different ways you, and then of course you can customize the invoice in terms of their look and feel adding your logo and that kind of thing as well okay let's go back to the cog up top let's go to the account and settings again back to the account and settings we're in the sales area let's click in here which is like clicking the pencil to go inside of it we've got the preferred invoice terms so now we're generally going to be using the default settings here but if you click on the little item item here it'll tell you a little bit about it so it sets the default payment date net 30 means payment is due 30 days so when i create an invoice it defaults to net 30. we have some other payment dates here you can add more terms if you would like to in the lists area so in other words if i close this back out and I go to the cog up top and I was to go to the lists area you've got this terms list where you can adjust your term list here and then when I put the terms into my invoice if I was to make an invoice I won't actually make one but just like look at it we're just going to check one out check it out then you got your terms defaulting at the 30 here which means the invoice date if, if it was the date of 119 30 days later would be 218 so it's going to set the default uh, end date or due date for you which helps us to track if it's past due and all that kind of stuff closing this back out let's go back into the cog again go back into the account and settings and then we're going to go back into the sales area i don't think i changed anything it keeps on asking me but i don't think i and then we've got the del the preferred delivery i'm going to keep it at the default sets the default delivery method the delivery method default determines the way you'll deliver sales forms to newly created customers you can change the default delivery method for a customer by editing the customer on the customer list so you can go into the customer list and edit the customer you can also change the delivery method when you create an individual invoice or other sales forms so when you actually make the invoice you can change it there as well so in other words the customer settings will typically default it when you pick the customer on the invoice and then of course you can then change it from that point on the actual invoice so the shipping adds uh, shipping fields date tracking number destination subtotal to sales forms 
uh, related settings, advanced chart of accounts and shipping accounts. So we're going to keep the default as is here. And then you've got the custom fields, which is again, is another really nice, interesting area, but it's kind of a, another sub area that we can get into in and of itself. We might look at it a little bit more after the, the standard uh, problem that we're going to look at. We're going to keep the defaults at this point in time. So we have the, we have the go to the settings, custom fields to manage your custom fields. So you can go here to manage the custom fields, custom transaction number that's on by default, lets you view and change your transaction number. We've got the classification of tax and related invoices, enable tax invoice and retail invoice classifications. We've got the service date as a service date field. If you need to track the date, a service was performed separately from the invoice date. Now note on an accrual basis method, when you enter the invoice into the system, that's the date in which QuickBooks is going to record the sale that took place. But it's possible that you actually did the work at some time in the past. If, for like example, in a job cost system, you might, for example, have uh, done the work in the past and you're billing it for it next month. So the month that you're billing in isn't the month that the work was done. And if you're doing a perfect accrual basis method, you should kind of recognize the income when the work was actually done. And so it'd be nice to note when the work was done. And then you got the discount adds a discount field to invoices and other sales forms. Uh, related settings are in the advanced chart of accounts and discount account because you could set up the account that the discount is going to. Now this is going to be useful be if you're giving the discounts. Some of these fields are, are nice to look at and are useful if you're using them. However, they also add a lot of more spaces onto the invoices. So, so in other words, you might say, why don't I just turn all the like these other fields on? Well, you're going to have an invoice that has a lot more uh, data input points. And if you're not using those data input points, then it, it's not it's too cluttered of an of a invoice typically, but you can experiment with them as well. We might take a look at some of these more after the practice problem. So we got the deposit uh, adds a deposit field to invoices so you can subtract a customer deposit from the total to calculate the balance due. We might take a look at that in a future presentation, but we're going to keep it off at this point in the in uh, the process. Tips gratuity adds a tips field to sales receipts, not for mandatory gratuity or service fees, related settings, advanced chart of account. So you got your tips field if that's going to be something. And then the tags lets you add tags to track sales in custom ways. And so this is another kind of specialty area, neat, a neat feature that they have, but uh, we might talk about it at a future point. We're not going to use it in the standard practice problem. Next one, we've got the products and services show products service column on the sales form. So we're going to be showing that we're going to have that on by the default show the SKU, which is the sales stock number, or is that what it's called the stock keeping unit, the stock keeping unit. And of course, that would only be applicable if you're using the stock or inventory and tracking the inventory. And you also have a stock keeping unit to be tracking within it. And then we've got the price rules. This is in the beta, we're going to keep it off for now, meaning they're testing it out at this point. Price rules allow you to provide discounts for specific products to certain customers for a specific amount of time. So it gives you a little bit a lot more, you know, flexibility in terms of custom settings and uh, track quantity and price uh, price slash rate adds quantity and rate fields to the sales forms. So you can track this information for products and services. That's a, would be the default. We're going to keep that on as the default track inventory quantity on hand, which is going to obviously track the inventory quantity on hand. And that would only be useful if you have inventory that you're using, meaning you're not in a service type of company and you're using a uh, perpetual inventory system as opposed to a periodic inventory system tracking the inventory in other words using the QuickBooks system then we have the late fees so default charge applied to overdue invoices so if you're sending invoices out and they're late and then you're charging late fees on them that's when you could go into basically this setting and go into that in more detail we're not going to be adding the late fees at this point in time so I'm going to close this back out. We're going to keep the default all off for it. Progress invoicing. So this is going to be, I'm going to say, what did I do? I hope I didn't save it. <laughs> uh, create multiple uh, partial invoices from a single estimate. 
So this would be something if you're in a special kind of industry where you need progress invoicing, you would want to turn that on. We might look a little bit more into progress invoicing after the practice problem, but for the practice problem, we're not going to have progress invoicing like most companies do not and turning it off and keeping the default there. And then we got the default email messages sent with the sales form. So these are going to be the forms that are going to be that you're generally going to give to the clients. And so you could have a message with them. Typically, we're going to be emailing them to clients. So you want that kind of default message to make it easier to give to the clients. So it says here's the default, the greeting, dear, and then the name. So it gives the full name versus other ways that you can you can put the name if you want the last name first or something, a more formal name or the company name. And then this is for the invoice form, the, the estimate, the credit memo, the sales receipt, the statement, the refund form. Now the invoice, of course, is what you what you send out when you you do work and you bill someone, but they have not yet paid you, you're invoicing them. And then the estimate is an estimate that doesn't really have a transaction related to it. The credit memo is the form that's saying, hey, uh, there's a problem so we're we're giving you a credit in essence to the, like re they returned it or the something was wrong with the sale the sales receipt is something that happens at the same point in time so it's probably not something that you're you're emailing as much possibly because you're emailing the invoice to try to collect the sales receipt means you got paid at the same point in time so it's just kind of a thank you form because you should have already gotten paid the statement form is going to be a form that if they have for example multiple invoices outstanding you can combine those multiple invoices into one statement instead of sending them multiple different invoices saying, hey, you haven't paid us on multiple different invoices, putting them in on one statement, and then the refund receipt would be the refund. So if we look at the invoice, it says the default email is going to say invoice and then the invoice number, meaning it's going to populate the invoice number from Get Great Guitars. And then it says, we appreciate your business. Please find your invoice detail here. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Have a great day. Get Great Guitars. Email me at, the, at our email address and copy new invoices to the address. And you can add you know, other emails if you would like them emailed, although that would take up a lot of space on your email, so I don't typically do it. And then you can see some of these other ones. The estimate says, please find your estimate details. Free, f feel free to contact us if you have any questions. We look forward to working with you. The credit memo says your credit memo is attached. We have reduced your account balance by the amount shown on the credit memo. And then the sales receipt says, please review the sales receipt below. We appreciate it very much because the sale took place. Already. And then the statement says, your statement is attached. Please remit payment at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your business. We appreciate it very much. And then the refund doesn't have anything on the refund. And then you've got your estimate and invoice other forms on down below. Then the reminders. Let's go down to the reminders. I didn't change anything, did I? You had, do you want to save changes before switching? I don't. didn't make any changes. But reminders. Default email message for invoice reminders. So automatically invoice reminders. So you can turn that on if you want to automatically invoice the reminders and then you could set your dates and settings on down below automatic email reminders will only apply to new invoices turning off automatic reminders uh, removes from all all invoices so in other words it's only going to be applied to the invoices you start today it's not going to it's not going to send out invoices or these reminders to invoices that were af on the books prior to turning this thing on and then it says remind one uh, three days before the due date and then remind two on the due date, remind three, three days after the due date. So that could obviously be useful and help you to track your accounts uh, receivable and hopefully get paid on it. As the section heading says over here, the get paid section of the, of the book. So then we've got the online delay. So email options for all uh, sales forms show, show short summary in email, uh, show full details in the email. So we're gonna keep that one as the option and the PDF attachment, additional email options for invoices. So online invoice, HTML, plain text. We're going to keep the in online invoice. And then finally, the statements. And now the statements are going to be those things like if you have multiple invoices that are outstanding for a particular customer, then instead of sending them multiple invoices, you can basically send them a statement, which would take all the invoices into one statement. So then if that's the case, the question is, do you want to list the transactions as a single line, meaning each invoice is a single line on the statement, or do you want to list each transaction, including all the detail? 
including, in other words, all the items that they purchased on the invoice. So the default is to have it on one line, which is probably good if you have long invoices. But if your invoices aren't that long, you might want to switch it to listing all the detail. And, the, and that means when you send out this one statement, they can see all the detail on it. It also has an aging report on the bottom of it so they can see if their outstanding balance is due or past due and how past due and so on. So those are the general, the general items here. I'm going to close this back out and go back then to the uh, Get Things Done, which <laughs> used to be called the home page. But now it's the Get Things Done page, and we'll continue on with the preferences next time.